Hi, this is Ms. Warnow. Welcome back to Reactions. Today we're going to be predicting two more categories um, of uh, products. So we have the single replacement. And remember, for a single replacement, we could have a cation replacement, which means um, A is going to B. You spit out the cation, and then um, you get an element of compound, and the anion, where the single element is actually going to replace the anion. Okay, so uh, just because we put an element with um, in a solution or um, just because we put an element and compound together does not mean it's going to react okay so we need to check the activity series so uh, what's the activity series so um, the activity series is a list of the reactivity of elements and and we've come up with this activity based on doing experiments with the elements and seeing which is the most reactive so if we looked at this particular activity series of metals with hydrogen being included the most active elements at the top so lithium is the most active and then um, gold is at the bottom this is just a, sh a short list the one that we'll use okay so this is for cation replacement so this is for metals and then since hydrogen is a cation it's included in there as well so if we are putting aluminum into something that has lithium can aluminum replace lithium so we come down here we find aluminum well aluminum is setting right here can it replace something higher than it no so aluminum could not replace a lithium okay now can copper replace gold so we go and find copper Copper is, let's see here, could it replace gold? Yes, it could because copper is higher on the activity series, so that's a yes. Can zinc replace hydrogen? So let's go find zinc. Zinc is here, and where's hydrogen? Hydrogen is below it, so yes, zinc can replace hydrogen. Can iron replace calcium? So go find uh, iron. There's iron and where's calcium up here no iron cannot replace calcium okay. all right so um, we also can can do this when we have a single um, single replacement involving an anion so for us we're only going to be looking at the anions as a halogen so we have set up here the um, halogens and so you have fluorine, chlorine, bromine, iodine. Okay, fluorine is the most active, with iodine being the least active. Now, flipping back over here, you need to go ahead and take out your um, your reference sheet that we gave you and locate this on your um, on your uh, reference sheet. Okay, because you'll be using that, and you should also have out your periodic table. Now, we won't give you the activity series for the halogens because it's on your periodic table. So you need to have out your periodic table to work these problems as well. Okay, so um, single replacement dealing with the halogens. Can fluorine replace bromine? Well, here's fluorine and here's bromine. Can fluorine replace it? Yes, it can. Can iodine, here's iodine, replace fluorine, which is right here? No. As you can see, iodine's not going to replace anything because it's at the very bottom. Can chlorine, here's chlorine, replace fluorine, which is right here? No, it cannot. Can bromine, which is here, can it replace iodine? Yes, it can. So the higher up one will take will be the most active. All right, so let's do some of these, okay? So here, chlorine, this is an anion, this is a halogen. So we need to be worried about our halogen list of activities. So can chlorine replace this fluorine here? All right, so look on your um, periodic table, and I have a little pull out here. So can um, chlorine replace fluorine? And the answer is no. So what we would write here as a product is NR. There's no reaction there. Okay, chlorine cannot replace fluorine. Example two, we have calcium, which is a metal, so that means we're going to be looking at our activity series of the metals. Can it replace aluminum? Well, let's go look at it. Here's, um, look on your little uh, reference sheet, and let's find calcium is here. And where is aluminum? 
down here. Yes, calcium can. So this reaction actually takes place. Okay, so let's go ahead and write this one out. So I'm going to actually rewrite it. Calcium solid plus aluminum chloride aqueous. And what that's going to um, give us is aluminum is going to come out. It's going to come out solid form plus calcium chloride. Two. And that's going to be, that's actually going to be um, aqueous. And I'll show you how to determine this physical state in just a moment. And then, of course, we want to make sure we balance that. So we put a two here and a three here and then put a three here and a two here. Wow. And it's balanced. Okay. All right. Pellets of lead are put into a 1.5 molar zinc nitrate. So we have lead. We have pellets, so that's solid. And 1.5 molar zinc nitrate indicates that that is, uh, the 1.5 molar indicates that this is an aqueous solution. So first of all, will it happen? Okay, so look at your, um, here, let's see, will um, lead replace zinc? Lead is here, and zinc is up here. So I would say lead can not replace zinc, so we're going to say no reaction there, okay? All right, the next one says fluorine is bubbled, so fluorine is diatomic, bubbled, it's a gas, into a solution of sodium bromide, solution being aqueous, okay? Well, is that reaction going to take place? Well, this is um, a halogen. Um, let's see if it can replace that bromine. So we come over here and look. Um, here is fluorine and here's bromine. Yes, fluorine can definitely replace it. So we're going to come with bromine out. And bromine is diatomic. And it is a liquid at STP. And then we have fluorine um, with sodium. So sodium, fluorine. Okay, and this is actually going to be aqueous. Okay, in just a few moments, I'm going to show you how I know that that's aqueous. We're going to use what we call a solubility chart. And I'll explain how to use that in just a moment. So we'll put a 2 here to balance the bromine, and put a 2 here to balance the sodium and the fluorine, and then it's balanced. Okay? All right, so double replacement. So some products are precipitate. So in a double replacement, remember you have a compound and compound, you get in a compound and compound. And double replacement products are actually quite easy to write because you've been doing nomenclature. So they're pretty easy to write, but you do have to figure out what their physical state is. And so for our precipitates, we have to use the solubility rules to determine if a precipitate forms. And remember the precipitate is a solid form from two solutions that combine. So if a precipitate forms, we consider a reaction a precipitate reaction. This is a new category here. So just to kind of um, recap, okay, we've talked about double replacements, but now you now know two types of double replacement. You know, a neutralization reaction, which is an acid and base that gives you a salt, which is an ionic compound in water. And now you know that a double replacement could also be a precipitate reaction. We have a solution of solution, and you form a solid compound, and then something else. It could be another solid compound. It could be an aqueous compound. It doesn't matter what this other thing is, but one of them has to form a solid. Solid. So how do you know if it forms a solid? Well, here are the solubility rules, and you should be looking at the reference sheet that we've given you, and you'll be given on the um, test and quizzes as well. So there are lots of different um, solubility rules, but these are the ones that we're going to use for our class, okay? So um, these rules are written by priority top to bottom. So, you know, when you see, it might seem like two rules com conflict with each other. The rule higher up, just like on the activity series, takes precedence. So these things are always soluble. I expect you to know that alkali metals, which is group one, and ammonium are always soluble. So are these. And so I always say, remember, alkali metals, ammonium, and nitrates are always soluble. But of course, you have this reference. Generally soluble, okay? So these are, most of the time, they're going to be soluble, but they do have some exceptions. So like chlorine, something paired up with chlorine tends to, to be soluble, unless what it is is silver, lead, or mercury one. 
Sulfates tend to be soluble. Most of the time you can take a guess and say, hey, it's going to be aqueous unless it's paired up with one of these. Then it's not aqueous. It's going to get an S for solid. These here are generally, if you see them, you can pretty much bank that they're probably going to form a precipitate. However, rule one takes precedence. Anytime you see an alkali metal, you know it's going to be aqueous. Okay, and then these here, if you see um, oxygen and hydroxide, you can bank on that it's pretty much going to be a precipitate or be in a solid state, unless it's with an alkali metal or, um, or ammonium. Okay, now there are some uh, here, we talked about these are slightly soluble, but we're going to still consider them insoluble. Okay, so we have to be able to use this. So when you write the product that you get lithium nitrate, you have to, you have to decide what its physical state is. So we have to use these solubility rules. So lithium nitrate, lithium is an alkali metal. Because I see it's an alkali metal, I already know it's going to get an AQ. It's aqueous. It's going to dissolve. Okay, um, calcium carbonate. I go over here and I find carbonate. Here's carbonate. It tends to be what? Insoluble, which means it tends to form a solid. Unless it's with one of the things in rule one, group one. Well, calcium's not in group one. It's an alkaline earth metal. So that means this is going to form a solid. Magnesium chloride. You go find chlorides. Chlorides tend to be soluble, which means they tend to form aqueous solutions unless they're with one of these three. Are they with one of those three? No, they're with magnesium. So we'll say that this is aqueous. Barium sulfate. Here's um, sulfate setting right here. It tends to be soluble unless it's with one of these. Is it with one of those? Yep, it's with barium. So it's not going to be soluble. It's going to be insoluble. So that means it's going to get a solid. Okay, so if it's soluble, it's aqueous. If it's insoluble, it's a solid. Phosphates, here's phosphates right here. Phosphates tend to be insoluble unless they're with rule one. Is it with rule one? Nope. So that means it's insoluble, so it's going to get a solid. Calcium hydroxide. Hydroxides tend to be insoluble except for rule one, and it's with calcium. And even though calcium is slightly soluble, we're going to consider them insoluble, so it's going to get an S. Okay. Take a moment and pause the video and try to work the second column. Okay. So, um, lead, uh, so you have chlorate. Chlorate is always soluble, so put the AQ there. Sodium is an alkali metal, always soluble, put the AQ there. Chlorides tend to be soluble unless they're with, oh, look, lead, so that's going to get an S. Sulfates tend to be soluble, that's good, it tends to get an AQ unless it's with one of these exceptions. And is it with one of those? Nope, it doesn't look like it, so it gets the AQ. Sodium, I don't even have to look. Sodium is an alkali metal, so I know it gets an AQ. Lithium, I don't even have to look. Lithium is an alkali metal, so I know that it's going to be AQ. So if you remember the alkali nitrates and ammonium and acetates, I'll throw an acetate there. It makes it go really quick for you. All right, so we have to be able to write this. So hydrochloric acid with the solution of sodium hydroxide. So hydrochloric acid is HCl. Um, and remember, it's an acid, so it's AQ with the solution of sodium hydroxide. And so we're going to switch these um, cations. Okay, so we're going to get sodium chloride. And then we have to think what state will sodium chloride be in. Sodium's an alkali metal, and alkali metals are always soluble, so it gets AQ. Plus, um, then we're going to be H and OH. And what does HOH form? Water, which is a liquid. This is an acid base, so we knew we were going to get some kind of salt and water here. Okay, so then we have to make sure it's balanced. It looks balanced to me, so we'll write balanced. Aqueous barium chloride, so we have barium chloride, and it's aqueous, with potassium sulfate, aqueous it says, and then we're going to um, make the um, cation switch places, so barium will go with sulfate, and then potassium will go with chloride, and then we go put in our physical state, so barium um, Barium sulfate. Okay, so let's look up here. 
let's look at sulfates. Let's see. Okay, so sulfates. Let's see. Sulfates are right here. Sulfates generally are aqueous unless they're with uplook barium. So it's not going to be aqueous. It's going to be a form of precipitate. So that means that it gets a S here. And then this one, I don't even have to look up. Potassium is an alkali metal, and they are always aqueous. And then we need to balance that. There's two chlorines, two potassium, so we'll put the two here. And that's done. Another phosphoric acid. I'm just going to work this one. So I know it's going to be aqueous. Let's look at the phosphates real quick. Phosphates tend to be insoluble, except they're with rule one. It's not, so that means this is going to be a solid. And then we need to balance it real quickly. So we'll put a three here, and we'll put a six here, and then put a two here. Okay. Aqueous sodium acetate. NaC2H3O2 aqueous. Get uh, sodium sulfide. That's aqueous. I don't even have to look because sodium is an alkali metal. And then lithium acetate, C2H3O2. I don't even have to look that up because it has an alkali metal there. Okay. And so um, when we go to balances, I think we put a two here and a two here, and it is balanced. And that concludes video four on reactions. Um, you should have taken high quality and in-depth notes. Rewatch the videos as needed and ask questions.